Would be good. So what do we want to say here? Well, it's it people panic about doing these tests. And uh, there's a lot to it, but most of them are the same structure, right? If you go to my, uh, I guess it's the steps, it shows you that most of the text is verbatim for every, every proof, right? There's just some little things you have to uh, pay attention to. And when you're doing a test, the first thing to be really clear of is what are the instances, right? What are the objects in the, in the instance and know how they fit into the spots in the proof, right? To know what the solutions are, what decision is being made about each object and what are the costs of the objects. Uh, you need to know what the greedy criteria is and, um, and the paragraph which changes st to st minus one to st, right? You need to know what's valid, what solutions are valid, and what the cost of the solution is, so you know that it's optimal. And you you've got to pr then prove it's valid. In your program to prove it's valid, you have to prove st is at least as good. Oh no, valid! You have to come up here and say what's a valid solution, and just make sure you haven't messed that up, right? And extends, well, you force it to be consistent with the last event, and you have to make sure you don't mess up the previous events, right? And as and least as good, well, you got to say, what is the cost of a solution and make sure it gets better or the same, right? Does that make sense? It's... <clears throat> I think if you if you get into a panic, you can always do badly, right? But if you just learn the structure and flow with it, you'll be fine. All right. So, as I've, as you know, usually on tests uh, there would be one question which would be a, one of these greedy proofs, right? But we're going to be trying to throw in a little bit more recursion because your recursion was so easy. Uh, I, we hopefully we'll get back the solutions of the marks, so we'll know whether how how you did on it. And uh, so, and then we need something about graphs, right? And something about greedy algorithms. So, what? Oh, graphs. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so this is just talk, chatting about it a little bit more, right? We we take our first object and we decide: do we take it or not take it? Do we color it red or not? So here's a split in choices, right? <clears throat> and then there's very splits about what do we do with the second object. Right in the and the third object, and so each of these leaves of this tree is is a possible solution, right? And the reason this one stopped is maybe because it became uh, we couldn't make it into a full solution, right? So um, some of these full solutions are optimal, right? And meaning they have the same value. And uh, recursive backtracking is slow because it will try various options and then backtrack and then try something else and backtrack, right? It doesn't adapt for a search in this tree. And as you can see by the tree, it could be exponentially big, right? Because there's two, two to the n, if you have n choices. Um, but what does the greedy algorithm do, right? It just makes the greedy choice each time. And so it just goes down one path of this tree, right? And uh, suppose the algorithm is sitting here, right? It made this greedy choice and, and it hasn't considered things in the future, right? 
And so this part of the tree has been, you know, all these solutions have been burned, right? They're not possible because we are only considering things consistent with what the algorithm has done so far, right? And the fairy godmother is, um, she wants what's best for the algorithm, of course, and she's, uh, that, you know, that he hasn't messed up yet. So he, she, she is holding uh, an optimal solution here, the dark purple, which is consistent with what the algorithms does. See, it's one of, it's one of the optimal solutions that she's holding, right? And uh, so she wants him uh, to not make decisions that prevent him an optimal life, right? So, so then the little brother is babysitting here, and. Um, his job is to keep the mom happy. And uh, maybe the fairy godmother here is is hoping that the 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 algorithm will be a, a lawyer, right? You can imagine down here, he's a lawyer. And then the algorithm makes a decision for better or for worse, and can no longer be a lawyer, right? And is the mom going to be upset? Right? Well, she might be upset. Um, I mean, all that stuff's burnt. But what the what the son says, what, what the blue prover guy says, uh, well, is it so bad if you can't be a, a lawyer if if he can become a doctor instead? Right? So here he's a lawyer, but over here he's a doctor. And so maybe they won't be so upset, right? Um, and so what we do is we, the prover, right, moves the optimal solution over, right? Does that make sense? Just a little proof by picture. Um, right, so the key is as long as there's an optimal solution consistent with what we're doing, we'll be fine. Um, Right, so here again, proof by pictures. Those are the algorithm. What the algorithm has done so far, and then the algorithm uh, knows what it's done so far, and it uh, makes a decision about the next object, right? And then, then it knows this is what it's done, right? It's a combine those, right? And so here's what the algorithm is doing, right? It keeps making a decision about the next object. And uh, initially, no decisions have been made yet. And here you have the final output, right? So, um, this is just saying, right? She has uh, what is a superset from what the algorithm does, right? It, it's consistent with what the algorithm has done. And then, then uh, the algorithm has made a new decision about a new object, and the prover is going to take what the fairy godmother has here and what the new decision by the algorithm is, and the prover produces a new solution. Uh, and so you have to give this description of, hey, I have this, fairy godmother has this, and the algorithm did this, and I have to describe how to do this. Right. And and then you have to prove, as we keep saying over again, it's valid and its value is at least as good and it extends what was done before. Right. I don't know. Is this this is just rehashing? Does it help to rehash a bit? Right. So you can kind of see in the picture here, this can at the beginning, she can be holding any solution, right? Because nothing, the algorithm hasn't done anything yet. So any optimal solution is fine. And when we get over here, the algorithm has a full solution. So these have to be equal, right? That's just saying here initially nothing done. That's how we establish the loop invariant, right? Remember the, the you also want to say in your paragraph, how do you establish the loop invariant, right? You want to say, 
from the precondition, we have a bunch of objects and we haven't, the algorithm hasn't done anything yet. So the, there exists an optimal solution consistent with that, right? And at the end, we need to get the post condition, right? The end, the algorithm is committed to everything. So we have a full solution. And uh, so there exists an optimal solution consistent with it, namely what the algorithm has, right? Everybody kind of thought good? Um, I was just at a workshop on the on the weekend on uh, communication and boundaries. And I find I get tired of sitting and listening all day. So I, I sympathize you guys get tired of sitting and listening. And she kept saying, like all the time, she kept saying, do you understand? And uh, I started finding it annoying. And then I realized, Jeff, you always say, what is it I say? Are you following or I say something? Hopefully it's not too annoying. All right. So here again, let's do proof by picture again, right? We're we're on the loop. We got the loop invariant that uh, that we have an st minus one that's consistent, right? And then in order to make progress, right, we we go in some direction, and then we come back on the loop invariant, right? So uh, when you when we're coming up this way, we say, well, the algorithm made a decision about this next object. So we have to add it to the solution that the fairy godmother has, right? This is what she's holding and we add the next object, right? And that, that we're making progress because uh, we're considering one more object. But the loop invariant is not true, right? Because we just threw in this extra object. So in order to make the, we have to come back on the path. And, uh, she'll say, hey, maybe it was no longer valid or no longer optimal. So we have to fix it. So you, you have to find and describe some object that the fairy godmother is holding that you can change its decision about it, right? Does that, we've talked about that. Does that make sense? That's what I always say. Well, a fr I, I sometimes call people dude, and a friend of mine pointed out to me that I only call people dude when I want to change their behavior, when I'm kind of fussing at them. So the fairy godmother is saying, man, you, you added this new object to my solution, and I'm complaining. You got to fix it. That's, that, was, that was just Jeff's, Jeff's notation of you've done something wrong. If I ever say call you do, you'll know that you've done something wrong. All right. All right. If you add this one, then it's no longer optimal. Um, so you change the decision about something else. All right. Here, so this is this is what the solution will be, right? It's the solution had you before, plus what the algorithm is added. Um, plus some new decision about some object that you have to describe. And is it okay for me to describe this object as the one the fairy godmother did next? We don't know what order the fairy godmother does things, do we? Right? So you could say it's the one with the next finishing time. It's the one that over that overlaps with the one that's been deleted, right? Yeah. Right. So you, um, when you describe the algorithm, which probably for a time limited test I'll give you, right? I'll tell you the order that you consider the objects and how you make the decision on it. Right. Then you'll tell me, what you'll do is you'll tell me the loop invariant. Uh, you'll tell me. Uh, how do you establish the loop invariant, which is the algorithms made no decisions yet? Then you'll say, um, now we're going to maintain the loop invariant. So let's assume it's true for time t minus one. 
And what does that mean? That means the algorithm has done H T minus one and we have S T minus one, right? Then the algorithm makes a decision about some object at time T, right? Then we describe what S T is. It's what the fairy godmother has at T minus one plus the decision made about this object. Minus, plus or minus, we have to uh, change something else that she's done, right? So you describe this paragraph. And then you prove that now we have ST and you prove that it's still valid, meaning when you made these two changes, one of the changes probably messed it and it's no longer valid and then the other change fixed the valid, right? Uh, it, so you have to prove it's still valid. You have to prove it's still, it's, its value is at least as good. So maybe when you make this change, it's not as valuable, but when you make this change, it's as valuable again. And you have to prove it's still consistent with what the algorithm has done, right? So this change made sure that it was consistent with time t minus one, uh, time t. This is consistent with previous times, but we have to make sure we don't mess that up, right? Does that make sense? And then you get, how do you get the post condition? You say, well, the algorithms made a decision about everything, so we have a full solution, right? That's, those are the paragraphs. And you didn't have to, it's, it's written down in the, in the steps. And you know I've done it enough because I can just ramble them off. All right. Oh yeah, this is just present past, right? Here, this is what I've said. The out. This is what the algorithm has done in the past. This is what the algorithm just did, right? This is the future that's not defined, right? Um, here's the full solution without a timeline. Those ones are committing, right? We bring this guy in to be consistent with that, and then we have to change something over there, right? And is it valid? Well, we know this part is valid because it was valid for the algorithm, right? And we know uh, there's, so that's the same, right? We know that part's valid, right? And we know this part's valid because the fairy godmother was doing it. Right? And it's just this sort of nuance in here that we have to fix. Right? Does that make sense? And that's why people are tempted to talk about the next thing that the algorithm has is, is done, but you have to define what that means. Right? You have to look for where the conflict's being created. Right? It's an optimal, same idea. Right. All right. Um, so I, on tests, I've said to people, what is the loop invariant of a greedy algorithm? And they have said to me, we proved that the algorithm solution is, and, and is that right? No, because the algorithm doesn't have a solution yet, only has a partial solution, right? The, what the algorithm's done so far is, is optimal. Well, I guess in the past I've said that that doesn't mean anything, but I have this new thing. What the algorithm has done so far, if you look at the potential, right, the potential is still as good as it. So you could say something like that. Um, right, so this is the loop invariant we want. Everybody remember? Yeah. Yes, that's the goal. Right, so remember remember the example where you have a four, three, and a one coin, and you're trying to make six cents, right? So in the very first step, the, the fairy godmother is holding an optimal solution. She's holding two three-cent coins. And then the algorithm comes and takes a four-cent coin. So the, the prover has to change her solution, right? She has to take the four cent coin, but now it adds up to too much. 
So how does she massage it into something that's less as, that only has two coins and adds up to six cents and has a four cent coin? It just it doesn't work. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think um These are just possible answers that they've said, and you can read over them. You, I think we know that know these about these already. Um, hmm? This what this? Yeah. These are. These maybe we should, we can. These are um, saying answers people have given me that were wrong, right? So so here we can see wrong answers, right? Uh, right. Sometimes people switch things like that. Uh, I just I just type it. when I mark wrong tests, I type in wrong answers. So this is just a lot of wrong answers. Uh, right. How do we prove that we maintain this loop invariant? Right. Uh, we people here. Oh, here's something. One of my favorite pet peeves. Uh, whether you're writing about Shakespeare or writing about math, never use the word. Ne never use it's or he's unless I know who we're talking about, right? So, so here it says, we prove that it extends AT is optimal and is valid, right? So I'm going to just go in and try to read this, and I have to figure out who are we, right? So are we the algorithm? No, the algorithm doesn't do these things. Right. So we, the prover, um, well, prove it extends. Well, what's it? Well, it's it's ST. Right. So uh, don't don't ever say it without me knowing what it is. Right. Does that make sense? Um, right. So we tell the fairy godmother to change her solution into a new solution. And we prove that that new solution. Right. When in doubt write it down again so we, we we know what we're talking about, right? If you say it, then it's scary to know what we're talking about, um, right? Everybody get that? Um, what does it mean, right? So you have to give, right? I keep repeating the same mistakes because I see the same mistakes over and over again, right? We add the object that the algorithm took and we delete the object that the fairy godmother took next, right? That doesn't mean anything, right? Um, right, we can say we add it if it's not already in there, and we know that it was valid uh, as it was, so when we add this, it's no longer valid, so we have to somehow define some new object that we're going to delete, that somehow can, you have to say, in fact, why is it no longer valid? It's because we added this guy, right? What she had before was valid, and we added this guy, and so it's no longer valid. And so what's really happening is that what we're adding conflicts with something that she had. So find it and delete it, right? That's the whole nature is what we're deleting here are the things that overlap with this, right? Does that make sense? Um, so here's, here's what we said before, right? Um, right, the key thing about this new object is it, it fixes any conflict that happened when we added this, right? Um, Right. 
we add this, we, we just add it and it's no longer valid. Why? Because they overlap in time because they add up to too much. So you got to fix it, right? How do we prove it extends? Well, um, right, we could say the prover compares what the fairy godmother has to what the algorithm has done. Uh, I don't know whether the prover sees it or not. It's a moot point. Uh, but this did extend with the first steps, right? And so when we change it into this, we make sure we don't mess up the previous steps. Right? Didn't we do valid already? Um, how do you prove it's optimal? Well, you make sure it's the it's the same sort of it was optimal, and we we instruct in a way that makes it be just as good, right? We we added object uh, object T, maybe that made it worse. We take out object prime, we make it good again. Same idea, right? Why do we change the solution each iteration? Yeah. And why do we do it? All right. So, so first I would say, who are we? The algorithm doesn't, right? And second off, the, alg right, the algorithm doesn't do it. Uh, the prover changes it in order, in order to ensure that the loop invariant is maintained, right? right? The last bridge hasn't been built, right? To prove that the algorithm produces a globally optimal solution, right? Right, if you make a bunch of local decisions, it doesn't necessarily do the trick. All right, you ready for another one? How are we doing for time? 12 minutes. All right, let's see what we can do. Minimal, if, if these algorithms I'm giving are the classics. If you go to anywhere in the world and take th third year algorithms, you're going to do greedy algorithms, you're going to do minimal spanning tree. All right, so uh, what's a graph? You know what a graph, yeah. It depends on the problem, right? It's it's you throw in this object T object T, it why what's the problem now? You gotta fix the problem. Find the problem and fix it. Right. We'll look at more, you know, we're doing a couple more examples here. So you got a you got a graph that uh has weights on the edges, and uh, a solution is a subset of the edges such that it's a tree, meaning there are no cycles, right? And it needs to be a spanning tree, meaning uh, nodes that were connected by the yellow edges are, are still connected by the blue edges, right? F and G were connected. Well, they're still connected, right? In fact, you just say, what are the connected components, right? They don't change. You don't disconnect, right? And what's the cost? It's the sum of the edges you've taken, and you want to find the one that minimizes minimal spanning tree, right? So here's here's the algorithm. You uh, the greedy criteria is grab the edge with the smallest weight, right? So it's that one, and and you we take it. Right, then it's that one and we take it, and it's that one and we take it, and we we take these, right? And then at some point we do we take this one. Creates a cycle, right? So we can't we can't create, take it. And then um can we take this one? No, it creates a cycle. In fact, I'm pretty sure from now on they create, oh, maybe we did, we got a new one there. 
but uh, they start creating cycles, and so you can't take them. Right? Everybody get the algorithm? You basically sort them based on their weights, and the next one you take if it doesn't create a cycle. Right? And then you have to prove that what we have is, well, it's acyclic because we didn't create any cycles, right? And we have to, not too hard to prove that it spans and that it's optimal. All right. So that's the algorithm, right? You just keep taking edges as long as they don't create cycles. And we have to do the proof here. How much time do you have for proof? Nine minutes. Hey, we might be able to do a proof in nine minutes. All right, so how do you establish the loop invariant? Right, initially no decisions have been made, so every optimal solution is, is consistent. Um, all right, so let's pay, you know, let's see. We right now we're maintaining the loop invariant, right? So you, we can write this statement down. Remember, this is our logic sentence, right? And then we want to say, oh, by the loop invariant, we know that there exists an optimal solution. So let's give it a name, right? And then the algorithm commits to the next edge. And we describe how to change this into this so that it's still valid, extends, and is optimal, right? And that proves that we've maintained the loop invariant, right? So uh, the algorithm is, the algorithm's done some things and uh, right, she's holding an optimal solution consistent with what the algorithm has done so far. The algorithm commits to the next edge, right? and he needs to tell you how to change it. So let's do proof here by picture. He takes, the algorithm takes this edge, right? And then we have to say, hey, fairy godmother, algorithm just took this edge, you need to take it if you haven't taken it already. If you've taken it already, we're done, right? Otherwise you have to take it. So she takes it. Now, when we take it, what's the problem? Why won't it be, be valid anymore? And what will that mean? You can't just say conflict on the test. You have to go back and say, what does conflict mean? That's pretty much it. It creates a cycle, right? All right, so what do we say to her? She's, it, it's going to create this cycle, and we're going to have to break it. We're going to say, hey, fairy god the mother, we know that you, your, well, your solution spans the whole graph. And you, there is an edge from u to v. So you need a path from u to v, right? So we know she's holding some path from u to v, right? And uh, we, the algorithm has committed to some of them. So she's committed to those same ones. And uh, what do, and can, is it possible that we've committed to all, the algorithm is committed to all of them? No, because it creates a cycle, right? So, uh, so what we say is there's some algorithm that she's taken that the algorithm is not taken that's in this cycle, right? And there could be lots of them. There could, we could find the most expensive one or the cheapest one, but here we're gonna just say take any one, right? We know that she has a cycle, uh, we have, she has this path. We find any edge that she's taken that the algorithm is not taken. And we tell her to drop it, right? So that's what, uh, which object T is this one? We're adding, the algorithm did. What's object T prime? How do we describe it? It's in her path from U to V that the algorithm hasn't taken, right? No, but we can describe it. We can say, we know that you have a path from U to V because you're spanning the graph. So there's some, you have some way to get from U to V. We know you don't have all, of, that the algorithm hasn't taken all of them because otherwise the algorithm would have a cycle. So we're gonna say, choose any edge that's in your path that the algorithm hasn't taken and drop it, right? All right, so that's, she does that, 
And now we have to prove that why does it extend the solution that the algorithm has? Well, we added this one and we were very careful when she dropped this one that, that the algorithm didn't have it, right? So everybody see it still extends, right? Uh, now we have to prove that it's valid and optimal. Um, before we do that, let's just do a little more example is um, here the algorithm adds this two. And so what she's going to drop, you see, she could drop this two or this two, right? So they have the same, they have the same value. So it's, it's, it's not changing the value of the solution, right? All right, so what to prove that it's valid, we have to prove that it still uh, connects everybody and has no cycles, right? Well, it by adding this, it created one cycle and we broke it, right? So we also have to prove that it spans well, so spanning means there's a, if there was a path from X to Y in the original graph, then she has a path, right? And she has this path that goes like this. Why do we still have a path when we take this edge away? Because we go the other way around the cycle, right? People see that? Everybody see up? Like a, a cycle of rope, which went everywhere, just cutting it from one place to the other. Tie it in the other way. Yeah, exactly. It's too complicated about, right? I would say if it's too complicated, everybody will crash and burn. Like if you have a vertex from U to V and from W to V, so V doesn't come twice. Yeah. That's basically it. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if she had a path, then she still has a path, right? Because we add this edge. Um, and now there's one last thing to prove. And that is that the value of the guy be edge being deleted is we want minimal spanning tree. So this guy is smaller or equal to this one. And how do we know that this one has a smaller equal to weight than this one? Exactly, exactly. We haven't, the algorithm hasn't considered this one yet, right? The algorithm considered this one first, so it must have a smaller weight. And that is the entire proof, right? Everybody good with that? All right. So uh, I don't know how many.